Hello there, this is Lawrence, KL7L. Uh, so, we've been having some issues with this new FT891. Uh, we've been in communication with Gigaparts, the original uh, place we purchased it from, who uh, quickly said, hey, you've had it more than 10 days, you've got to deal with Yesu. And now we've been dealing with Yesu and really we've come to a stop on dialogue because they say well it is what it is and uh, what is it that we got a problem with well the radio is actually self as an HF radio it appears great I mean it, it is it's a relatively cheap radio uh, it's got some uh, issues to do with some uh, close in and some uh, some mixing issues phase noise and stuff but uh, it's a it's a radio but um, what we do have is a number of sproggies and birdies that appear irregular harmonics up and down the band, including in those into the 160 meter band here. And one of the issues, and we'll get back to it in a minute, is the guy that wrote to me from Yesu USA, nice chap, uh, said, hey, uh, we've, uh, we've replicated all the noises and sproggies that you can see, uh, but we're not gonna do anything about it, uh, because they're in such a low level on 160 meters less than S1 that uh, it's not a problem and of course that is inane and not correct because um, we work with very low signal levels I work on WSJT uh, we do some work down on 475 kilohertz and 137 kilohertz and some of the signals we're working are very uh, the signals uh, on our antenna systems are very weak um, they've got low noise amplifiers, amplifiers and things on them. So the actual level on the receive side is going into the receiver is actually quite low. It's above the threshold. But the issue is that he said, well, it's not a problem because the sproggies you're hearing, which are artifacts within the radio itself and not anything else, um, are uh, less than S1. And of course, that's not a problem, he says. But S1 on digital, if you just happen to look at the screen here, looks like that. And if you have, and that's the sproggy you can hear, if I turn up a bit, where are we? I'll tune through it. It's got some filtering in at the moment. But you get the idea, and that's what it looks like with WSJT. Now, if you happen to be on the wrong frequency, and within uh, the pass band that you require that would completely annihilate any radio signal you're trying to decode so uh, Yesu America here we go look you have produced a radio that has got a design issue and we'll get into that in a second you told me that the interference and the sproggies and the harmonics that we'll talk about in a second are of a low level and don't cause an issue well they do and um, obviously you don't work digital modes uh, and day to day where you may be like 20 dB below noise where you're using some of these slow modes and guess what that's what you get that great big red snake you can see it wandering up and down now this is a harmonic you're hearing and every now and again if we wander up and down the band a bit you'll hear repetitive uh, things of what this sounds like and where are they actually coming from? Well, the receiver down below uh, one meg becomes extremely noisy. I wonder if I can, if I can't really show it to you particularly easy. I'll take the shift off here. So, uh, So we have a number of artifacts that appear. Another one of those sproggies there. We have this carrier at 852. Uh, there's another one of those sproggies. And, and God, this sounds like switch mode band noise. You know, if I, was, if I wasn't knowing better and we're terminated to 50 ohms in the back here using a, a one watt uh, uh, terminator and end type um, uh, termaline type of thing but if you start to listen down here you'll hear what happens
and so on. And they're getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Now, that one's on 426 kilohertz. I have no idea what it is. It's, I mean, I think the second I have is at 450, so maybe something to do with that, but it's huge. Right. Now, these sproggies are getting really quite strong. Now, what Yesu say was, hey, uh, you're on the general broadcast band, you're outside the specifications, uh, yeah, we're going to just drop the ball here. But the thing is that any radio receiver that I've worked on the last 50 years, it never had this problem. We've got a, an issue here, something to do with the synthesizer. It doesn't, or, or a VCO, or a DC to DC, to DC level converter. <clears throat> but you shouldn't be able to get these. I mean, th th this is crazy. Listen to that. Now, if you happen to want to listen on the 630 meter band, or 137 kilohertz, which isn't the spec of this radio, it's in the general broadcast section. Uh, it gets really difficult because those sproggies wander around and uh, you've already seen what it looks like at 1.9 uh, megs, 1.8 megs, the 160 meter band. Now if you get down right down before, way low, we get all sorts of funny noises. So we got reference oscillator noises and divide by n noises. So this is uh, probably the uh, the either the original carrier with uh, that it multiplies up because it's probably got some fast edges, but around about 40 kilohertz, it's really bad, and it just goes on and on and on and on and on, and it goes into the handband. Okay, so <clears throat> there is some a problem with the receiver, and uh, Yesu knows it. And other people have uh, pointed out the problems before, uh, both to Yesu uh, USA and other locations, and uh, they're doing nothing about it. And the reason is that uh, they probably know uh, they know it's got an issue, and I'm thinking it's probably a decoupling issue, maybe a level converter issue, <clears throat> but it is actually affecting the radio within the specification that it's designed for because the uh, gigaparts told me, hey, we've reviewed your original video, all those noises, they're definitely getting into the radio from your local wiring and uh, lights and things, which is rubbish, of course, because I was terminated and the radio was sitting on a battery by itself, as it is now, way away from anything that uh, could create noise. And then uh, we tried it again with Yesu USA, saying, hey, look, Yesu USA, uh, gigaparts don't care anymore, this is what we've got, what do you think? And of course, they uh, they don't like it either because they know what it is, but they won't do anything about it. They're saying, "Oh, that interference that we're hearing on 160 is at a low level, and it isn't an issue." But as you've seen by the screen on WSJTX, it is. If you happen to be on the wrong frequency, as the sproggy internally generated within the radio goes through your passband or happens to sit there, it is a big issue because it will completely eliminate the signal you're trying to listen to. So, Yesu USA, are you going to come clean as to what the issues are with this uh, this uh, this problem? It's not RF generated internally. Doesn't doesn't matter whether the antenna is terminated or unterminated. So it's after the RF sections. Uh, it appears to sound like those wandering carriers, something like similar to a switch mode power supply, and it's fast switching, fast, uh, very sharp edged transients. Um, so it could be a DC DC level converter that there isn't enough decoupling on, or maybe something around the VCO or one of the divide by end synthesizers. I just don't know, but it has an issue, and uh, be interesting to see if they come up with anything. It's a lovely radio, and I'm not decrying it uh, for what its purpose. If you're not, if you're just a run of the mark guy running SSB or CW. And that sproggy doesn't happen to be where you want to listen it's maybe not an issue but what I would ask you to do as an owner of an FT891 
whether you've got it from Giga Parts or from any other locations, just terminate yours into 50 ohms with a dummy load and you tune around the 160 meter band and see what you can hear. The signals, the interference is very low but it is there and uh, it seems to be a common issue with this radio. So I'm going to pass this back to US, uh, Yesu USA and, and say are you going to do anything about this? Is there a fix or don't you just care? Are you not going to support the customers and the products that you put out there? Which is a bit of a shame. This in fact you know is the first radio I've had with these sort of major problems. I've been a, a licensed radio ham now since uh, 1974 I'm a commercial radio marine operator and we do a lot of experimentation. It's in my profession as a RRF engineer. And really to be told that uh, it's, uh, it's not an issue is really uh, a bit sad.